tonight on Nightstand. Mail order brides and mail order husbands. Well, Coco, welcome to America. Oh, me so horny. I got soup firmer than this guy. Then, sex, booze, and lesbians. What is the most romantic way to get a woman to do what you want? That's easy. Liquor. Mail order brides and the expert show on Nightstand, where comedy doesn't get any more better. And now, the host of Nightstand, Dick Dietrich. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's very nice of you. Thank you. Mail order brides and mail order husbands. Every day in America, thousands of men and women spend big money in hopes of marrying their international fantasy. But do they always get what they fantasized about as they take an extra five minutes in the shower? <laughs> One of those who didn't was Melissa. Now, that's not her real name. We concealed her real identity so she wouldn't be recognized by her friends in Delano, California. <laughs> Now, Cindy, I, I mean Melissa, uh, <laughs> why would you be seeking a male order spouse? I mean, you're very attractive. Well, thank you. In fact, I'd say attractive enough that your personality wouldn't matter to most guys. Well, thank you again, Dick. I suppose a lot of it has to do with what I do for a living. Let me ask you this. What do you do for a living? <laughs> Well, Dick, I work in a plumbing supply house. Really? Well, let me plunge right into this and flush out your problem. <laughs> but seriously, um, let me ask you, is plumbing supply really the glamorous, fast-paced industry we've heard so much about? No, it isn't, Dick. Actually, all day long, it's a lot of guys standing around talking about cleaning their pipes or working their snake. <laughs> So anyway, you're being dumped on at your job at the plumbing supply house. You're being dumped on in your social life. Then what happens? Well, then I heard about this company that arranges mail order companionship. It's called the International House of Spouses. <laughs> of course, I hose. <laughs> and did they find you through some high-tech computer survey that singles out, you know, rich young women in the right income and social bracket? No, they handed me a flyer as I walked past a strip club. <laughs> okay, so you're reading the flyer. What are you thinking? Okay, I'm thinking, here's my chance to finally meet somebody. You know, somebody romantic, somebody exotic, somebody who doesn't know anything about plumbing. <laughs> somebody from a third world country where they don't even have plumbing there, Dick. <laughs> Uh, okay, so you filled out the application. They showed you lots of pictures, lots of perspectives on various men. And then you found Armando. Yes, Armando seemed perfect. His picture was so handsome, and his letters, they were like poetry. Plumbers don't write poetry, Dick. <laughs> I guess not. Well, this poet's with us tonight, folks. You want to meet him? Yeah. Come on out. Now, I, I, heard, I, I heard you call him Coco. I thought his name was Armando. That's what I was told, but this is what I got. His name is Coco. Oh, come on, baby. Give Coco a chance. Come on, Coco make you feel good, baby. Oh, me so horny. Well, Coco, welcome, welcome to America. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Now, Coco, you've heard Melissa's story. You no doubt have even heard even more during your pillow talk. But there's been no pillow talk, Dick. Hey, that's not my fault. Coco want to talk. <laughs> oh, she one hot woman, eh, Dickie? Huh? <laughs> Every night I say to her, baby, you give me some of that hot stuff in bed. But I think maybe she afraid of what Coco can give her. Oh. Coco, 
the only thing you're giving me is an ulcer. <laughs> look, Dick, does this look like the kind of guy that could write those letters that I gave you? All right, yeah, I have one of those letters with me. Let's read it and you guys be the judge. My darling, the wind through the pine trees whispers the sounds of my love for you. My 32-inch waistline and 48-inch chest <laughs> yearns to feel the warmth and satisfy all that you desire. I love those words. <laughs> I melted when I read that letter. And to think that I fell for all those lies. How about it, Coco? Did you lie in those letters? Okay, I lie. <laughs> but an honest mistake. Oh, honest mistake? A 32-inch waist and a 48-inch chest? Hello? I just got number reversed, that's all. <laughs> I so want to marry this woman. Mm -hmm. I love you so much. Aww. Honest baby, please give Coco a chance. <laughs> Dick, I think, I think mail order brides are just like sex slaves. My dear! Okay, ma'am, 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 I, I know, ma'am, ma'am, ma ma listen, I, I'm very, I know, I know, I know, I know. I'm very sorry, but you know what, you're early. You're early. You're supposed to jump up in segment three. Oh. <laughs> see, you see in the card, segment three. Okay, where were we? Ah, uh, yes, Melissa thought she'd ordered a tall cafe latte, but instead she got an extra grande mochaccino. Look, Dick, I don't totally blame Coco for this. The real culprit is the owner of the company that deceived me. Well, he's with us tonight, and we're going to meet him next. Our topic is mail-order brides, and when we come back, we'll tell you ladies how you, too, can order an oversexed Asian. It's the, <laughs> it's the gift that keeps on giving. Stick around. <laughs> Do you have cooties or are you it? You can be a guest on Nightstand. Give us a call at 555 Dicky. Not it. Thank you. Welcome back. We're talking about mail order spouses with Melissa and Coco and how Melissa would like hers marked Return to Sender. <laughs> Now we're going to meet the man who delivered that package to her. Please welcome Rod Wiener. Give him a hand. Welcome to the show, Rod. Thank you, Dick. But the last name is pronounced Weiner. Weiner? What did I say? You've said Wiener. But it's pronounced? Weiner. And what did I say? You said Wiener. It, it, it is spelled Wiener, but it's pronounced Weiner. Interesting. See, I'd rather be a Wiener over a Weiner. <laughs> But then again, a lot of people want to be a Richard, and I'd rather be a dick. <laughs> so anyway, Rod, uh, uh, mail order marriages, are they a ripoff or just a scam? Neither, Dick. Look, I, I am a legitimate businessman providing a real service for a particular niche. Well, Melissa says her niche needs to be scratched. <laughs> Dick, you see, she is the exception. Oh, please. That cannot be true. Can I speak here? Look, we please thousands of women and men, men who are maybe not the best looking or most outgoing or dynamic. You know what I mean? Don't look at me, Rod. I've, <laughs> I've found plenty of appreciative women as long as I'm willing to bargain or pay cash. Look, the only person your business pleases is you. You rip off people with false promises and lies. Oh, no, not lies. You give Coco a chance, and Coco please you. Honest. Me so horny! <laughs> that is exactly right. Why don't you give him a chance? Besides, you were the one who sought me out. Hey, I admit that. But the man I ordered was handsome, he was tall, and he was firm. I got soup firmer than this guy. Look, look, we clearly state right up front in fine print that the International House of Spouses promises no guarantees, and we stand behind that promise. Okay, even if you... <laughs> even if you promised me Armando, my dream man, and instead I got Coco, the happy busboy? <laughs> I think Luna's wife are just like sex slave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I know, ma'am. Segment three, remember? Oh. Segment three. 
Okay, trust the professional. It'll be... It'll be a lot more dramatic in segment three, okay? Mueller, see how you say segment three in Asian for me, okay? Thank you. Where were we? We were talking about what a fraud his business is. Oh, no, that, see, that is not true at all. Because I got my own wife this way. You met your wife through the mail? That's right, Dick. You know, oddly enough, I used to have trouble finding dates. You see, seriously, marriage seemed an impossibility. Yeah. Then I read about Thailand. Oh, speaking of Thailand, I want to say hello to our new affiliate there, WMSG. <laughs> Let me say hi to him. Cho Chi Qing Da Fang Miang Bai Ha Men Noe. Right after Xena, Warrior Princess. <laughs> so you went to Thailand and found a wife. No, but see, Dick, I didn't have to go to Thailand. I did it all by mail. Ho, ho, ho. Well, we're going to meet that wife when we come back. Plus, we'll show you some packing tips to use when returning a spouse to the country of origin. <laughs> Don't go away. You can get Dick on the World Wide Web. Cruise on by. All right. We're back. The topic is male and female order brides and grooms. And we've been talking to Melissa, her parcel partner, Coco, <laughs> and international love broker, Rod Wiener, who pronounces it Weiner. <laughs> Who got his own wife through a mail order bride service and liked it so much he bought the company. Is that right? <laughs> That's right, Dick. All right, folks, you want to meet her? You want to meet Rod's yeah! wife? Come on out, Rod's wife. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Welcome. Now, I'm, I'm having a, a trouble uh, pronouncing the, the name. Is it, uh, I'm reading Thai. Is it, uh, how, what's the name? Me Tang. Oh, well, nice to meet you, Tang. Me Dick. Uh, uh, no, no. Uh, Dick, uh, Dick, the name is not just Tang, it's Me Tang. Oh, well then, me sorry. <laughs> uh, me Tang, how's your life so far in America? Oh, me love it, Dick. Me Tang, very lucky to have this man for my husband. Really? Oh, yeah. Me live on the streets of Bangkok till he pay for me to come to America. Now I so very grateful and I do anything for this a hunk of hunk of burning love. <laughs> well, Rod, uh, you seem very satisfied. Was it always this way? Well, there was a period of adjustment, but you got to give these things a little time. That's right. It takes time for my husband to train me to make him happy. Oh. <laughs> What is it you do to make him happy? Well, I start off when he come home by making him a drink and giving him a foot rub. Oh, really? What, what then? And then I make sure he feel good by giving him a hot oil body massage. Ooh. A massage? What next? And then I make him his favorite home-cooked meal. And as he eat it, I perform a sexy dance for him. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Don't, don't stop. Don't stop. And then we take a hot shower together and I rub soap all over his naked body. Yeah, more, more. Keep going. And then we make wild, passionate animal love. Yeah, go now, baby. Now, and now. Then yeah. I and then I tell him how brave he is. All right. I, I do those things for you too, Melissa. Oh, please, give Coco a chance. Ooh, Coco, stop it. Knock it off. Oh, oh. Ain't she a bitchin', folks? I say, tear me apart! Get up! Well, well, this is right. Why don't you give him a chance? Then you can be as happy as me and me. You, you've had one happy pairing out of how many thousands, Wiener? Uh, it's Wiener, and I've got hundreds of letters from satisfied customers because I operate a clean operation. Well, Rod, that might be true, but there are some who disagree with you. Some of those people are here tonight. <laughs> Mail order bride and nothing but sexy. That man who gave me my daughter, Prince. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
。What about that meat tank? Koti chi ka pa hi da. 没见 bra， 我拿 bra。We have to maintain ourselves. I'm sorry, Dick. It's just that I know how much this man is ripping people off, and it really upsets me. Well, Melissa, you have to learn to take your frustrations out on Coco. Oh. <laughs> me like that. <laughs> When we come back, we'll try to put an end to all this fighting. Plus, we'll meet my mail order bride, and I got to tell you, I can't wait. Me so horny. <laughs> To our mail order bride show, or as we like to call it, your chicks in the mail. <laughs> Now, in case you just joined us in the last segment, the lady in the audience with the bad timing made the point, "Quing cha nan kwa fa ti kalong," which begs the question: Rod, are you or are you not running an international house of prostitution? No. I told you. <laughs> Now,、well, look, Dick. I run a very legitimate business, and her situation is the exception. Well, we wanted to find out if that's true, so we secretly filled out an application with Rod's International House of Spouses, exchanged photos and letters with some potential wives before deciding on a 1971 Ukrainian milkmaiden <laughs> named Svetlana Onyanese. Now, <laughs> now tonight we're going to see her for the very first time, and we'll see for ourselves if Rod actually delivers. The beautiful blonde that he promises. What do you say to that, Rod? Put me to the test, Dick. We stand behind all of our women, and I think you'll agree. You got yourself quite a catch. <laughs> she seemed like it, judging by this letter she wrote me. Dear Mr. Dick, I told in America you number one big dick. I want to marry you. I on dairy farm work. I am master of two finger milking technique. Well, after reading this, I knew in a second I had to meet this woman. Well, you excited to meet her? Yes, I am, and I'm a little nervous too. So here she is from Russia with love, Svetlana Onyanese. Give her a hand. Well, Svetlana, welcome to America. Thank you. You. Are Dick? Well, that's what some call me. <laughs> well, you're very handsome man with a how you Americans say、uh, overweight. Well, thank you. I'm actually in several dental textbooks. <laughs> so,、uh, Rod, it looks like you certainly、uh, delivered what you promised, and let's see if Lana is going to deliver what she promised. Oh, we gonna make love now, Big Dick? <laughs> <laughs> Not so fast. I have to do my wrap up. Good night. For this, he's so horny.、Uh, Dick, aren't you forgetting one tiny little thing? The payment. All right, calm down, calm down, Weiner.、Uh, that's Weiner. I wasn't talking to you. <laughs> All right, here's your check. Freeze, FBI. What? You are both under arrest for pandering, white slavery, and illicit trade. Well, you can't arrest me, Weiner, Immigration Service. <laughs> Miss Tang and I are conducting a sting of buyers in the international prostitution market. Buyers like this scum here. You're with the INS? That's right, Criminal Marriages Division. Well, why are you arresting me? I'm just buying. Yeah, well, you, maybe you should have thought about that before you broke the law, Dietrich. You make me sick. Handcuffs? This was supposed to be on the honeymoon. On your feet. Well, you don't take me to jail. I'm not limber enough. Come on. <laughs> Well, what about Melissa and Coco? Huh? Why can't they go instead of me? Yeah, well, she never paid her money, so technically she's not guilty of anything. As for Coco, he'll be on the next train to Clarksville. I'm being deported. That's right. You have to leave the country because you're not married to a U.S. citizen. Let's go. Come on. Okay, okay, I go now. But I leaving 
woman of my dreams behind, but I'm not complaining. Uh, but just asking one other question. Uh, can I ask, beautiful lady of my dream, for one little kiss before I leave? Okay, okay. One. snappy. All right, all right. Well, what have we learned tonight? <laughs> well, we learned that I'm always the last to learn anything around this place. What else did we learn? Well, we learned that if you're going to buy a wife, buy American. For now, I'm Dick Dietrich. Call my lawyer. Get Cochran on the phone. Hey, nightstand isn't over yet. Hi. Are you a nymphomaniac contortionist? Call my personal pager at 555 Dicky. Thank you. Thank you. Every so often, we come across a viewer capable of writing us a letter. <laughs> and just last week, we got this one from a man named Bob, who writes us, Dear Nightstand, my wife is threatening to leave me. Okay, I have strayed from her arms more than once, but I can't live without her. She won't listen to me, but she may respond to Dick. <laughs> Please help me save my marriage. That letter moved us, folks. <laughs> so tonight, we've invited this couple to be on our show so we can save this marriage. How about it, huh? <laughs> All right, you want to meet the woman this louse doesn't deserve? Come on out, Darla. Darla, welcome. Now, you heard me read Bob's letter. He's obviously crazy about you. Why do you want to leave him? Well, I'm tired of Bob cheating on me. I'm tired of the excuses, the lonely nights, lipstick on his collar, rocks being thrown through our windows, boiled pet rabbits, fires. <laughs> so, so when exactly did you first think uh, Bob was cheating on you? I guess my first inkling was when I found him with another woman on our honeymoon. <laughs> Your honeymoon? He, he claimed that he was drunk and he thought he was in our room. Well, that should have worked. Uh, but uh, let's back up a bit. How, how did you first meet Bob? Well, I guess I first noticed Bob at my Alcoholics Anonymous meeting. Um, I knew it was love the first time I saw him stand up and say, my name is Bob and I'm an alcoholic. And um, our eyes kind of met. And then after the meeting, he asked me out for cocktails. Um, so how do you feel about him now? Well, I still love Bob, but... I just don't think I can trust him anymore. Mm -hmm. Folks, you want to meet Bob? Yeah! Come on out, Bob! <laughs> Bob! <laughs> Bob, welcome back to the show. You're the man, Dick. <laughs> no, you're the man, Bob. As many of you regular nightstand viewers know, Bob is a guy with a lot of problems. He's a sexaholic, he's an alcoholic, and now he's got marital problems. <laughs> marital problems that began on your honeymoon night, what should have been the most romantic night of your life, when your wife was opening up her home for the ultimate housewarming, you were pounding on somebody else's door. Hey, I'm sick, I need help. <laughs> Bob, you are more than sick. I mean, since we've been married, he's probably slept with over 2,000 women. Always with the math. <laughs> You actually think I liked having sex with all those women? Did you, Bob? Well, yeah. You know, I thought everything was great. I thought we had the perfect relationship until our honeymoon. Mm -hmm. And now, after all these affairs, Darla, how do you feel? Well, Dick, it makes me feel used. Mm -hmm. And why does that bother you? Well, <laughs> because sometimes I think he just married me for my inheritance. 
your inheritance. Yeah, I'm going to inherit a million dollars when I turn 30. What? <laughs> I had no idea you were coming into money. None of the servants at your parents' mansion would even talk to me. Look, buddy, I married you because of who you were, not who you are. <laughs> I'm at the end of my rope, Dick. I don't want to lose this little lady. I mean, she's the mother of my only legitimate child. How can you say you love me when you have not been faithful to me not one single day of our marriage? Yeah, what about that, Bob? By your own admission, last week alone, she's caught you with the maid, the cook, the real estate lady, the Avon lady, and a Jehovah's Witness that came to the door. <laughs> Hey, I'm sick. I need help. <laughs> it's not like I wanted to enjoy having sex with all those women. I'm the victim here. <laughs> Don't you understand, Darla? <laughs> I'm sorry, Bob. I would like to believe you, but I just, I just can't trust you anymore, and I cannot have sex with a man I cannot trust. It is hopeless. Damn it, Darla, it's not hopeless. I am going to help you save your marriage and your sex life, or I am going to go down trying. Oh, no, 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 no. When we come back, we'll try to save this marriage with the best experts we could find on short notice. <laughs> Save the marriage of Darla and Bob, which is in trouble because Bob likes to have sex with lots of different women and Darla doesn't. <laughs> to help, we've invited some experts from past shows. First, a relationship expert and unlicensed therapist whose latest bestseller is entitled Marriage. Close your eyes, it's not that bad. <laughs> Please welcome Maddie Gelman. <laughs> Maddie, glad you could make it. Dick, I'd have my tubes untied for you. <laughs> Maddie, please, there are people with vivid imaginations watching. <laughs> <laughs> Dick, you should be bottled. <laughs> also joining us tonight is the noted feminist lecturer and professorette of lesbian studies. She's the author of the best-selling book, The Bitches of Madison County, and her latest is entitled Women golfers and the women who love them. <laughs> Please welcome Dr. Susan Sonstein. <laughs> Dr. Sonstein, welcome to the show. It's a pleasure to be here, Dietrich. Okay. <laughs> Surprise, I could pleasure you. Uh, <laughs> Maddie, let's start with you. You've been waiting backstage. Darla and Bob, their marriage, any thoughts? Well, Dick, the problem is simple. Bob and Darla met when they were both in a very vulnerable state. Consequently, if they want this marriage to work, they've got to get to know each other. Dr. Sonsby, what do you think the problem is? Bob's a man. <laughs> Anything else you'd like to add? He has a penis. Okay. Darla needs to start making some wonderful meals, play little games, dress very sexy when Bob comes home. Dressing sexy as in a powder blue bustier with matching garter belt and stockings? Exactly. Or a see-through blouse with mini skirt and thong panties? That would also do the trick. Or a black leather hot pants with stiletto heels that would gracefully highlight her soft and sensuous buttocks. Dick, have you been peeking in my closet? Oh, please. All this about pleasing a man is a crock. Why can't it be the man's job to please the woman? Not that he would know how. Well, well, one way to teach him is to conduct a little role reversal. Role reversal? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where a man likes to act, acts like a woman and a woman acts like a man. <laughs> it would make one person aware of how another person perceives them. So, Bob, you be Darla. Darla, you pretend to be Bob. Uh, oh, yes, come yes, on, yes. Come on, come on, come on. Stand up. Give it a try. Give it a try. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. Come on. All right. All right. Now, 
Darla, I want you to act just like Bob on a typical <laughs> evening at home. Okay? Uh, okay, uh... uh. <laughs> I'm going out tonight. I'm going to nail anything that moves. What do you got to say about that? Have a good time, dear. You deserve it. You work hard. <laughs> By the way, you, you want me to loan you some condoms? I think we had a breakthrough. This is absurd, Dietrich. You make me ill. To even have this thing on your panel is a testament to your sleaze. Oh, Dr. Sonsby, what is eating you? <laughs> A woman wants a partner who does the simple things, Dick. A woman wants a partner who, who will gently brush her hair, who will draw her a bath, who will massage her weary, yet inviting shoulders. <laughs> a woman wants these things, doesn't she, Darla? Join me, come to our side. Our numbers are growing. <laughs> Darla, with another woman? <laughs> Trust me, you'll never get her to bump bagels with some chick. <laughs> I tried. <clears throat> you tried. Oh. oh, Bob, 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 you tried to get your wife involved with another woman so you could have some momentary gratification? Hey, I'm sick. I need help. <laughs> you are a pathetic excuse for a human being, even for a man. <laughs> hey, listen here, mister. Hey, watch who you're calling, I'm mister, take any mister. Crap from you. Hey, what, what, you breeder, what oh, do you don't know? Don't push me, don't push hey, me, pal. I'll push you, don't push me, pal. Well, as these two fight it out man to man, we're gonna take a break. But when we come back, we'll find out just how well Bob and Darla know each other. Will we play a game designed to determine how well Bob and Darla know each other? So we'll stick around. break, our two experts, Matty Gelman and Dr. Susan Sonspeen, ask Darla a couple of questions. Now we're going to ask Bob those same questions. Uh, Bob and Darla, are you willing to give it a try? I'm up for anything, Dick. Easy, Bob. That seems to be the problem. Okay, Matty, let's start with you. What was your first question for Bob? Okay, Bob. What is the most romantic way to get a woman to do what you want? That's easy. Liquor. What? And what's your response, Darla? I said gentle kisses. <laughs> oh, gentle kisses? Oh, that's sick. Okay, well, Dr. Sonsby, let's try question number two from you. <laughs> All right, Bob. The first time you and Darla made love, was she A, repulsed, or B, totally dissatisfied? <laughs> Tough choice. I <laughs> know, oh, not really, Dick. I know this lady. I know that she would have said repulsed and totally dissatisfied. <laughs> and uh, and, and what, what do you say, Darla? <laughs> I think the fact that they matched shows that there's some level of communication there. But just to confirm it, I think we should have one more question. Okay, okay, but this will be the one I asked Bob, okay? Right. Okay, Darla. What did Bob tell us was the one thing about himself that he wouldn't want anyone to know? Ooh. Okay, uh... He's a lousy tipper. What? It's true, you're a lousy tipper. You hate to tip, you don't even want to part with a nickel. Darla, the question was, what was the one thing I wouldn't want people to know about me? Ah, no. It's the enema thing. Oh, Bob! Yeah, just tell everybody, why don't you? Embarrass me. I mean, it's not, it's not enough that I'm coming out here and spilling my guts. <laughs> I just want you, baby. I don't care about that inheritance. As long as I've got you, I'm rich. 
I'll do anything to get you back. <laughs> well, will Bob do anything? We'll find out because waiting backstage is a man who holds the key to saving Bob and Darla's marriage. The one, the only, astounding Andy, when Nightstand continues. <laughs> back to Nightstand and our attempt to save Bob and Darla's marriage. So far, our two experts, Matty Gelman and Dr. Susan Sonspeen, have failed. And now, because our third expert was suddenly called back to Haiti, it's up to my next guest to give it a try. He's none other than the master debunker himself, the astounding Andy. <laughs> Astounding, Andy, you've been backstage in the smoke waiting to come on. Yes. You've heard Bob and Darla's story. Mm -hmm. What can you do to help? Uh, well, actually, Dick, it's really quite simple. You see, Bob is obviously obsessed with having sex with every woman who comes along. And as Darla doesn't want that, Bob obviously needs to be reprogrammed. Mm, kind of like CBS. <laughs> <laughs> well, not quite that difficult, Dick. Um, <laughs> Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put Bob in a temporary hypnotic trance. Then I will isolate the root of Bob's obsession and then give him a uh, post-hypnotic suggestion to correct it. Oh, he is so obviously a fake. Oh, you're just jealous because I have a magic wand and you don't. <laughs> Why, that's astounding. Thank you. OK, we've got to move along here. We don't oh, have right. short on time. What are you going to do to help? OK, uh, Bob, why don't you come sit next to me, Darla, if you could swap uh, with Bob there. OK, now I'm going to be hypnotizing Bob using this crystal ball. Uh, this is actually my grandfather's crystal ball. It's all that was left after the cremation. <laughs> Bob, concentrate on the crystal ball. Relax. Watch the ball move from side to side, and you will be more relaxed. The more the ball goes from side to side, the more relaxed you will become. This is just a carnival spectacle. Now, dude, come on, you just wait a minute now. No, no, really, Dick, it's okay. Um, she's right, really, it's all smoke and mirrors. Any, any fool with half a brain could see that. Right, Bob? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's ridiculous to think anybody could hypnotize somebody with a crystal ball. I mean, look at this. I mean, it doesn't do anything, really, does it? I mean, if you were to concentrate on the ball and you just kind of clear your mind and totally relax, until you're feeling rather sleepy, and then when I snap my fingers, you will go into a deep sleep. <laughs> Why, that's astounding. Thank you. <laughs> oh. Thank you. OK, now, what about Bob? Oh, yes, what about Bob? Yes, Bob. OK, Bob, you're still relaxed. Listen to the sound of my voice. I will count to three, and when I count to three, you will fall into a deep sleep. Do you understand? Yes. One, two, three, sleep. <laughs> Bob, can you hear me? Yes. Bob, I'd like you to remember back a few years. Go back, go back. Let the years tick away. You're a teenager, Bob. Can you see yourself in junior high school? Yes, I can. Mm-hmm. I'm very cool. <laughs> The chicks dig me. <laughs> they all want me. Mm -hmm. Cheerleading squad, the, the prom queen and her court. Uh-oh, I'm in trouble. I have to go to the guidance counselor. Well, tell us about that, Bob. What did she have to say? She said, you're sick. You need help. <laughs> Anything else? That I was pretty good in bed for a seventh grader. <laughs> further, Bob. We're going to go back to your childhood, to your parents. Do you remember them? Yes. I remember one day I came home from detention early, and I, I... Uh, you must tell us, Bob. Come on, free yourself. I opened the bedroom door, and there was Dad with another woman. Aww. He was so happy. <laughs> I'd never seen him that happy. Even when mom came in and shot him in the head, he still had a smile. And I'll always remember his last words to me. Son, call an ambu. <laughs> I want her to be just like daddy. Daddy, I miss you. Uh, 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 that's astounding. Thank you. <laughs> Is 
is to reprogram Bob. Right? right. Bob, when I count to three, you will wake up. And when you do, you will remember only that you are deeply in love with the woman by your side. The one who makes you feel so special. Do you understand? Yes. And not only that, you must remember that to earn her love, you must never cheat again. Understand? Yes. And if you really care for me, you will make no claims on my inheritance. None whatsoever. Now, wait a minute. Hold the phone. <laughs> I'm trying to work with you here. You see? You see? He's only after me for my money. Oh, fine. Fine. You can keep your money if you aren't going to be willing to share it. Well, you won't even have to worry about that. You can be as many women as you want, you slime. Fine. Fine. Go ahead. Leave. I can get any dozen women I want. One, two, three. Just like that. <laughs> Hello, Bob. <laughs> Say, did they do a nightstand makeover on Are You Gorgeous? Ooh, what is that intoxicating smell? Talk to me, Big Daddy. <laughs> What do we have here? Look who's changed sides. <laughs> What's going on? I think Bob's becoming a lesbian. <laughs> That's astounding. Thank you. <laughs> well, folks, what did we learn tonight? We learned that marriage is a tough road to hoe. And though we didn't have a hoe on tonight's episode, we did have a lesbian. And to my detractors out there who say Dick Dietrich just goes for sensationalism, I think we've proven that tonight, even for a lesbian like Dr. Sanspeen, Dick is the answer. 